Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a system of equations. What makes this system interesting is that we're looking first of all for real solutions, not integer solutions. And also that we have three variables but two equations. So this is going to be a non-standard system. Okay, so let's see how we can solve this uh, system uh, in two different ways. So I'm going to show you two methods here. Uh, first of which uh, is my favorite, by the way, and you can agree or disagree with me. Please let me know. Let's get started. Okay, so first method. The first method basically involves some interesting algebraic manipulations. Here's how we go. I'm going to go ahead and substitute. Um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to isolate x plus y here. Okay, so this is going to look like this x plus y is equal to 2 minus z, okay? So at this point, you might be thinking, oh, is he going to do substitution? Okay, let's watch and see. Okay, so I was able to isolate x plus y from the first one, which is straightforward, I think. And then from the second equation, what I'm going to do is I'd like to isolate x, y. And I'll tell you why in a little bit. Uh, let's see. So if I do that, uh, I'll be getting z squared plus 4 all over 2, right? Okay, so you can just add z squared and divide by 2. Okay, easy stuff. Now, what am I supposed to do next, right? Okay, so we have three variables, but uh, two equations. So, but we can take advantage of something, which is super important when you're solving systems and equations and stuff like that. And that's called Vieta. As you know, Vieta is a French mathematician, and he came up with interesting stuff about polynomials. And what it is, is that it actually, uh, you can find the sum of the roots and the product of the roots and other stuff uh, in a polynomial without actually finding the roots. But we're, we're kind of reversing the process here. So basically what it comes down to is we have, as, uh, we have an equation, which I would call quadratic because it has two roots. And uh, we do know the sum of the roots and the product of the roots. At this point, you can just... Um, assume that z is like a constant number at this point, and don't worry about it being a variable. We're just going to treat it as a normal number. Okay? Make sense? Okay. So let's go ahead and get started here. So what I'm going to do is I, I would like to write the equation. Okay. So I want to write the equation whose uh, sum of roots and whose product is given. So if we know that, um, so let's put it this way. If x plus y is the sum of the roots and x, y is the product, then I can basically say that this equation can be written as t squared minus st plus p is equal to zero. Okay. And in other words, if you look at this equation and let's say the roots are x and y, okay, suppose the roots are x and y, how do you find the sum of the roots? Negative b over a, which is s, what's the product? c over a, which is p. Okay. You can go back and forth. So, from here, then I should be able to write my equation. And I just used any other variable. I mean, you can use x as well, but it will be a little confusing. So I just used a different variable. Okay, let's just use t. So t squared minus, so s is the sum. So here, my sum is 2 minus z. I'm going to write it that way. Okay. Multiply by t plus the product goes here. And my product is what? z squared plus 4 over 2. And that is equal to zero. Okay, so basically, this is the equation that I can build from the sum and the product of the roots. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay, what am I going to do next? Well, I do have an equation in t, and I'm going to try to solve it. But how do you solve this equation? You can use that, obviously, the quadratic formula. You can look at the discriminant, so on and so forth, right? So let's go ahead and take a look at the discriminant. And why am I saying that? Why don't I just write the quadratic formula? Because something interesting will happen. That's why. All right. So let's see. So the discriminant, the delta, let's call that discriminant. Okay. There's a discriminant, which we can donate, or I mean, notate with delta is going to be um, b squared, which is 2 minus z squared minus 4ac. So 4a is 1. So I, I can just ignore that. Multiply by C, right? 4AC. There we go. Okay. Now, we can go ahead and cross-cancel these. We end up with a 2. Let's go ahead and uh, expand this. 
This is going to be 4 minus 4z plus z squared. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and subtract this, but I have to distribute the negative 2, so it's going to look like negative 2z squared minus 8. And then the discriminant is equal to what? Let's see what happens. Okay, I have z squared minus 2z squared, which is negative z squared. And then I have a negative 4z. And then 4 minus 8 is negative 4. Now, you might be saying, like, what is so special about this, right? Well, if you look at it carefully, you're going to know what I'm talking about. What is this equal to? Well, if you take out a negative 1, then you're getting something that should be familiar to you. Okay? Does that make sense? Does that ring a bell? It should. Well, it is equal to z plus 2 quantity squared with a negative sign in front of it. Now, if we're looking for real solutions, what is supposed to happen? Well, if we're looking for real solutions, the delta, the discriminant needs to be what? Greater than or equal to zero. Otherwise, we're going to have complex solutions, but we're interested in finding real solutions. So what is that supposed to mean? Well, z plus 2 quantity squared is a perfect square. When there's a negative in front of it, it means that it's going to be less than or equal to zero. So this expression here is always going to be less than or equal to zero. But on the other side, we're saying that it needs to be greater than or equal to zero. So what's the intersection? The intersection is that it needs to be equal to zero. Awesome. So then we have negative z plus 2 quantity squared is equal to zero. Now notice that this is a must. Otherwise, we're not going to have real solutions. Correct? All right. So this gives us a really nice result. z equals negative 2. Okay, cool. So now you got z what? How do you find x and y? Well, one method is you can go back to the original and, you know, substitute z and, like, go here, substitute z and solve for x. You could do that. Or you can use the equation that we generated. Look at this. We do have an equation, right? So I can just go ahead and use that here. But how am I going to use that? Okay, let's go ahead and... Uh, I guess I should have done this earlier. Okay, never mind. So let me go ahead and uh, take this guy and then move that over here. And if I can just move it even further right here, I think that's good. Now, I can just go ahead and use this equation. How? While z is equal to negative 2, you can go ahead and substitute that value, right? Okay, let's do it. Let's see what happens. If I do substitute negative 2 into the equation, I get t squared. 2 minus negative 2 is 4, so that's going to give me negative 4t. And then z squared is going to be 4. 4 plus 4 is 8. 8 divided by 2 is 4. So to keep a long story short, this is my equation in t. But remember, we said that x and y are the roots of this equation, right? That's how we got started. Therefore, the roots of this equation are going to give you the x and y values. Awesome. Then we're almost done with the first method. Now, what is that equal? Well, t minus 2 squared equals 0 which implies that t is equal to 2, which is equal to x, which is equal to y. Now, this equation has only one solution, and the roots are, we said, x and y, so that means x and y have to be equal. So, we basically found the values of x and y, so my solution set is going to be then x, comma, y, comma, z, is going to be 2, 2, and negative 2. So, this concludes the first method. I hope you like it because I really like it. Let me know what you think. Here goes the second method. Okay, cool. Now, the second method involves a slightly different strategy. And what we're going to do here is we're basically going to take this expression, right? Uh, the original one, of course. And we're going to take that and manipulate it, right? In a different way. Okay, let's go ahead and do that. So we know that x plus y plus c is equal to 2. Right? And then what else do we know? We also know that 2xy minus z squared is equal to 4. 2xy minus z squared is equal to 4. Awesome. Now, this is my second method, by the way. First method is done. Okay. Now, second method actually involves a very, very basic strategy. And that's called substitution. Awesome. How am I going to substitute, all right? There are three variables, two equations. How am I going to proceed? Well, it makes sense, in my opinion, and you, again, you may disagree with that. It would make sense if we isolated z from the first equation, which would be 2 minus x minus y, and then take that and then substitute it into 
the second equation. And let's see what happens from there, right? Okay, so if I do it, I'll be getting 2xy minus the quantity 2 minus x minus y squared, and that's equal to 4. Let's go on and expand the square. Uh, as you know, this is going to be like uh, three terms squared, so it's going to have six terms. a squared, b squared, c squared, and then plus 2ab, which is minus 4x, then I should be getting minus 4y plus 2xy, and then the whole thing is equal to 4. Awesome. When I expand this, this is going to look like 2xy minus 4 minus x squared minus y squared plus 4x plus 4y minus 2xy equals 4. Now here I can cancel out the 2xy. And if I put everything on the right hand side, because a lot of things are negative here, I don't want that. So it's going to look like x squared plus y squared plus 4 plus, not plus, but that should be a minus sign, minus 4x minus 4y, okay, sorry, it's a little messy, let me fix that, okay, x squared plus y squared plus 4 minus 4x minus 4y, and we already have another 4 there, so it's going to be plus 4 is equal to 0, beautiful. Now, how can I solve for x and y in this equation? Like, this kind of looks messy, but it's actually not very messy because if you kind of arrange these terms and put them together, now, I do have one 4 here, and I do have another 4 here, so I can go ahead and just split them up like this. And then also, hocus pocus, magic happens, right? We get x minus 2 quantity squared plus y minus 2 quantity squared is equal to 0. Now, sum of squares can only be 0 if the individual terms are 0. This means that x is equal to 2 and y is equal to 2. And if you remember, we had said that we used a substitution method, so z is equal to 2 minus x minus y. So since z is equal to 2 minus x minus y, that would equal 2 minus 2 minus 2, which is equal to negative 2. Therefore, we get the same order triple for x, y, z, which is 2, 2, and negative 2. Okay? Awesome. So that would be my solution. This is the second method. And that's it for this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please comment, like, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video, which is going to be an awesome geometry puzzle. See you tomorrow. Take care. Bye-bye.